Hey guys, welcome back to The Dangent. On today's episode, we're gonna check out a nice budget projector from a company called Bomaker. This is the Cinema 500 Max. Today I'm gonna to go through some of the details of this projector, show you if it's worth your money, and maybe it'll get you started in the home theater projector hobby. So thanks again for joining me here on The Dangent. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, leave it in the comments below. Thanks again for joining me here on The Dangent, guys. All right, guys, like I mentioned before, we're checking out the Bomaker Cinema 500 Max. Now, this is a $200 around there price point budget projector. Uh, Bomaker makes a few different products, so I recommend you check out their website. So now let's get to reviewing the Bomaker Cinema 500 Max. Okay guys, let's take a look at what comes inside the box of the Bomaker Cinema 500 Max. Like I said before, it's listed on the front that this is a full HD 1080p LED projector. On the side, we have some indicators that tell us that it is full HD, that it does have Wi Fi at 2.4 gigahertz and 5.8 gigahertz. It's got Bluetooth 5.0, a multi touch button bar on the top that I'll show you, and then it's advertising low input lag. So we'll have to test that out and see how it is with gaming. On the back, it's a list of the the same things that we just went over, also another picture of the unit. Once we open up the box, we're greeted with a nice remote. Let's take a look at what the remote looks like. So this thing's pretty cool. Nice and quality built, I should say. Got your uh, all your typical navigation buttons your brightness, your back button, your home button, your mute, your power, settings, etc. Uh, the build quality is pretty nice. I like the plastic, it's not too bad. Not much different than anything else really on the market. You also have your HDMI cable, your power cable, Looks like your manual, pretty thick manual and some AV cables. Inside the box, packaged pretty neatly, is the projector. Now this thing's pretty nice. It has a nice um, etched plastic top. Not sure how well you can see it on the camera. Give it some light there, but yeah, it's kind of got like this faux painted metal etched look. Here's the touch bar that it talks about with your up, down, left, right, select, back, and power buttons. On the back, all your standard ports. So your power port, your IR sensor, two USB ports, a headphone jack, an audio video jack, which is, I'm assuming, for this hookup right here, and two HDMI ports. So, has quite a bit of features. On the front, it's like you have another sensor. Along with that sensor, you have your lens cap, covering up the uh, rather large lens, I'd say, for a small unit like this. So that's pretty convenient, especially if you're gonna travel with it or something like that, you wanna protect it. On the side, you've got your focus for your lens. Gotta have that. And then you also have this, uh, this door here, and behind it is uh, like a charcoal filter. So that's awesome. There's some mechanicals in there. Put that back. You know, you can clean out the dust if it gets bad or if you have pets or something and 
it's all fuzzy. On the other side, looks like you have the, uh, this looks like a cooling unit. Um, I can see some fins in there, some, some metal heat dissipators. Um, and I didn't point out, but I should, this is a speaker grill back here. So this has one speaker uh, to place some audio through it. On the bottom, basically what's happening here is you have four points, and these are feet for the projector to sit on, but those do remove. I don't know if I can get it off right now, and you can see that it actually has a threaded insert there, so you can put a projector mount for your ceiling. So that's pretty convenient. Then it has your insignia label here. Um, I'm not sure if there's another thread under there. I'll have to take the sticker off to take a look, but I'll let you guys know. All in all, pretty nice unit. The plastic material is really nice. Um, the finish is nice. Pretty attractive for a 1080p cheap proje projector. Okay, everybody. Now, I've set up the projector just here on top of my couch so I can get it level. Um, I want to show you exactly what we're looking at here. Once you swing around, you can see that this is going to be the screen that it's going to be displayed on. Um, right now, I'm using a 120 inch Cine White screen. So, I'll show you guys how the operation starts by turning it on right now. Let me just get a little zoomed in here. If you can see in the back, there's an operational button selector. Hit the power button. It lights up blue. You can hear the fan. It gives you a little startup noise. And now the image is displayed on the screen. So keep in mind, the lights are at 100% in the dangen right now. But this is what it looks like with all the lights on. If I had to guess, um, I would say that it's probably, I don't know, 500, 400 lumens something along those lines. Not super bright, but definitely visible. So now we're gonna go ahead and turn the lights to 50%. Hey Google, turn lights to 50%. Okay, a bit more tolerable. Um, the image does come back a little bit better. Now we're going to go to lights off. Hey Google, turn lights off. That's more like it. That is a pretty bright image. Um, yeah, I would still put it at roughly 500 lumens, um, maybe a little bit more. It is rated at uh, 400. I believe that the brochure says 8,000. I'm not exactly sure how they rate that. Uh, but the next step, we're going to go through the user interface. All right, everybody, now we have the user interface on the um, projector screen. What it allows you to do is go through these first initial steps or settings. Uh, we have it connected to Wi Fi. I'll show you that. It's selected to on. It shows my Wi Fi network's connected. That's good. There's a Bluetooth setting. Um, that is on. It's looking for devices. You can see that my NVIDIA Shield is already showing up, so that's cool. There's a projection image setting screen, and this is where you can select, do you want it sitting on a desktop? Do you want it hanging upside down on a projector mount? You can then adjust your keystone, um, and you can also do a manual keystone. So if we select it, you can see the numbers change and the keystone adjusts. Now, I want to keep this at uh, 
no keystone, so zero, because when I test it for gaming, I want to make sure that we get the absolute best latency. There's also a digital zoom feature. Right now that's set to 100%, but as you can see, you can shrink the screen size if you need to. So I'm going to go ahead and make it 100% and leave it there. You also have a system update section. It does say that this projector has the latest OS, so that's good. You can also do a local update with a USB stick or restore to factory settings. Other settings include boot source options, power on selections, scheduled shutdown, and language. And then lastly, the about, which gives us our system version and our MAC address. Once we leave this menu setting, you can see on the left hand side there's a HDMI 1 selection, HDMI 2 selection, AV. There's an area where you can select Miracast, and that shows a picture of an Android. And then you have an iOS cast, which is self explanatory, that would be for an iOS or Apple device. You can then select movie, music, office suite, or photo. Let's select movie, see what happens. Ah, it says insert USB. Same thing with music, same thing with office suite, and same thing with photo. So, I think the next thing that we want to do is check out our HDMI input. Okay guys, so what I'm going to do next is I'm now going to turn on the NVIDIA Shield. So what I'm going to do is go to HDMI 1, select that input, and we'll see what pops up here. And like expected, I have the NVIDIA Shield menu. Looks pretty good. Let's see if there is a settings menu. It's like everything connected how it should. Now we'll go to some content. All right, we're going to go ahead and select Pacific Rim. Looks pretty good. Definitely a 1080p image. I don't see any hints of HDR, but the color is pretty decent. Black levels aren't bad either. If I had to guess right now, we're at about 100 inch screen, which is the max that this is capable of doing. Unless, of course, you take the projector back maybe even farther. But then you would probably degrade the image and lose a little bit of brightness. All in all, not bad looking. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you guys is the sound level that the fan on the Bomaker puts out. So we're looking at about 46 to 45 decibels. Maybe closer to 47. Not too bad, but on the louder side. All right, on our next little demo here, we're going to use the Xbox Series X, and I'm going to show you some gaming on the bomb. Now we're going to check out some Halo Infinite. Now, just so you guys can remember, I set this projector up on my stand here that I made for this, and I did not do any keystone, and the reason I didn't do any keystone is because I want the game to experience um, the lowest late latency possible. And by not using Keystone or any type of image adjustment, it allows us to get that lowest latency. So let's jump into multiplayer and see how it works. The latency so far is extremely low.
Um, the second I hit the trigger, the second it moves. Uh, you can tell it's in 60 hertz, but no issues gaming, uh, especially at high speed. I'm able to get a kill in, in Halo, so that's always a plus. Now I stuck him. The overall image quality is not that bad. It's a little bit hazy. Uh, I can, the only thing I can think of is that maybe the projector is a little bit too far from the screen. But honestly, for my setup, I mean, this could work as a temporary if, if I ever had an issue with my other projector or, you know, didn't want to use it for some reason. Definitely fills the gap or the need if you want to just do some gaming. All right, guys, the next step that I'm going to try out is the casting feature. Now, I have an iPhone 12 here, so it's a pretty new device. And what I'm going to try to do is cast some content from the phone directly to the projector so it displays on the screen. So let's see how well this works. Okay, so you guys can get another idea here. It shows Bomaker Cinema on my iPhone going to connect to that and we will screen mirror my phone. Check it out. Well, there's the selection screen. Looks pretty good. We'll go into an app. Let's try the weather app. That looks neat. Full weather display. That's awfully cool. Now let's watch maybe a, uh, a trailer. And you can hear the sound coming from the bomber. Seems to work pretty well, if you ask me. And the sound on the Bomaker projector isn't that bad. Especially from sort of some cartoons or maybe a video game like Rocket League. I bet you it's just fine. And if you want to stop casting, you just go back to the casting and click Stop Mirroring. Hey guys, thanks again for joining me here at the Dangen. Hopefully you liked the video on the Bomaker Cinema 500 Max as much as I did. It's a really cool budget projector and I really think if you're in the market, you should take advantage of it. Not only that, you can take advantage of a Bomaker promo code. If you type in Dangen42 on their website, you'll get a percentage off of the Bomaker Cinema 500 Max just for checking out this video. So if you have any other questions, make sure you leave them in the comments below. Other than that, make sure you hit that like and subscribe, and I will see you guys soon. Take care.